Welcome to Daily Wisdom, Walking the Path with the Buddha, a podcast shared by David Roylance. This podcast is dedicated to guiding you to completely eliminate the discontent mind and the suffering it causes by attaining enlightenment. Learn and practice the teachings of Gotama Buddha that will guide you to fully attain a peaceful, calm, serene, and content mind with joy. To support this podcast, visit patreon.com forward slash support Buddha or visit buddhadailywisdom.com where you will discover a full range of courses, retreats, and online learning resources to assist you on the path to enlightenment. Now, here's our teacher to share more. Sawadikap, hello and welcome to Daily Wisdom, Walking the Path with the Buddha. Today is our group learning program and I'm guiding students in loving kindness meditation. I'm gonna guide you in this meditation then afterwards I'll just open up to any and all questions that you guys might have related to the path to enlightenment. You're welcome to ask those once we get to that time. The way that we do guided loving kindness meditation is I start with some chanting to ease us into the meditation. Then I'm gonna come in with some guidance for breathing mindfulness meditation. There'll be a period of time there where it's just kind of quiet. We're just meditating, doing breathing mindfulness meditation. Then I'm gonna come in with the guidance for loving kindness meditation, which are affirmations that you're gonna be repeating in your mind on the out breath. And then after that, we'll go back to breathing mindfulness meditation and back to the chanting. This meditation is designed to help you eliminate anger, hatred, ill will, and all those lesser versions too, like frustration, irritation, agitation, annoyance, even the slightest dislike is eliminated from the mind by the time you get to enlightenment. You won't even have the slightest dislike towards other beings. But with craving, anger, and ignorance, or the unknowing of true reality in the mind, it's gonna be very hard to do that. So this is gonna help to eliminate that pollution of ill will in the mind. So welcome to all of you, whether you're joining for the first time or you're joining regularly, you're welcome to join along in this meditation. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started with the chanting and then I'll come in with the guidance. Arahang Samma Samoto Makawa Potang makawan hang api wate ami Sawakato makawata tamo Damang namasami Supati pano makawato Sawaka sanko Sankang namami Napmora Arahato Sama Samputasa Napmara Sabhakavato Arahato Sama Samputasa Napmara Sabhakavato Arahato Sama Samputasa Iti Pisu Mahakawa Arahang Sama Samoto We cha cha renang samuno Sakato roka we do Anu teroporisa Dama 
สติสัตตาวะมนุสรังโอโตภะคะวะตโอเค with the lower body and hands and arms comfortable and the upper body erect just close the eyes and start breathing in through the nose And out through the nose. Here, you're just looking to establish the breath, a nice, natural, steady, consistent breath, not forced or controlled. Just a gradual inhale through the nose, experiencing the full breath, and then whenever you're ready, exhale. Out through the nose, breathing in and out, breathing in and out. Your breath may not match up with the guidance that I'm providing, and that's okay. This is your practice. I'm just here for guidance. You can use this voice as a reminder that whenever you get to the next inhale, breathing gradually through the nose, developing a nice, natural, steady, consistent breath. And then, whenever you're ready, exhale out through the nose, experiencing the full breath, breathing in and out, breathing in. And out. With the breath well established, start fixating the mind on the breath, either the sound of the breath coming into the nose, or the sensation of air moving over the skin into the nose. The breath is the present moment. Fixate the mind on the breath. The present moment, breathing in and out, breathing in and out. With the mind fixated on the breath, whenever you notice that it moves off the breath, cut that off, let it go, and come back to the breath, the present moment. No need to observe the thought, label it, judge it, analyze it, or even try to figure out where it's coming from. Whenever you notice that the mind is moved off the breath. Cut that off. Let it go, and come back to the breath, the present moment. Breathing in and out. Breathing in and out. I'm going to be quiet now and let you do this work of focusing on the breath, cutting off and letting go any time the mind moves off the breath. Then I'll be back with more guidance on loving kindness meditation. You have nowhere to go. 
there's nothing to do. No one needs you right now. This is your time to focus on the breath. Breathing in. And out. Continuing to breathe in through the nose and out through the nose. Repeat these affirmations in the mind on the out breath. peaceful. May I be safe. May I 
be well. May I be free of all discontentedness in the suffering it causes. May mom and dad be peaceful. May they be safe. May they be well. May they be free of all discontentedness in the suffering that it causes. May my family, friends, co-workers, and neighbors all be peaceful. May they be safe. May they be well. May they be free of all discontentedness in the suffering that it causes. May all those who have harmed me be peaceful. May 
may they be safe. May they be well. May they be free of all discontentedness in the suffering that it causes. May all those who I have harmed be peaceful. May they be safe. May they be well. May they be free of all discontentedness in the suffering that it causes. May all beings, wherever they reside, be peaceful. May they be safe. May they be well. May they be free of all discontentedness in the suffering that it causes.
Now go back to breathing mindfulness meditation, focusing on the breath, cutting off and letting go any time the mind moves off the breath. Breathing in and out. Arahang 
Once again, welcome to all of you guys that are here. Welcome to those of you guys on Facebook, YouTube, or Zoom. Or if you're listening to this or watching this on the replay, welcome to everyone. Today's class is all about guiding you in loving kindness meditation, helping you to remember that loving kindness meditation is there to eliminate anger, hatred, and ill will, and all those lesser versions like frustration, irritation, annoyance, all of those. This is a meditation that you would like to customize. If you have individuals in your life that you do have anger or hatred towards, or maybe you have frustration or agitation or annoyance, you would like to include them in your meditation session so that rather than using just the general rings that I'm using, that you actually customize this. So if you have someone in your life named Bob or Jenny or Rebecca or somebody like this that you have anger, hatred, ill will towards. Even if they're no longer in your life and they're long gone and you'll never see them again, you're going to need to eradicate the anger and hatred in your mind and any of those lesser versions. So you would like to include them in your meditation for a period of time until you've gradually worn away any kind of anger, hatred, and ill will. This meditation is also helpful in order to transform your mind away from negative self-talk. If you have like an inner dialogue that is degrading and diminishing and you're talking negatively to this being, meaning you have anger, hatred, and ill will towards this being, this will clear that up too by saying, may I be peaceful. I be safe, I be well, I be free of discontentness. You're talking about this being who you are now. So you're going to need to be able to eradicate any kind of anger, hatred, and ill will towards this being. You're going to need to learn how to love this being, have a genuine interest in seeing all beings be well, including this being who you are. So what I'm going to do is open up to any and all questions that you guys have, whether you're in Facebook, YouTube, or Zoom, you can put your questions into the comment section. I'll be able to see that and then I can answer your questions for you. And if you're in Zoom, you can raise your hand electronically and then I'll be able to call on you and you'll be able to ask any and all questions that you like. 
So it looks like Yusuf has a question. If you'd like to go ahead, sir, you're welcome to go ahead. Hello, teacher David. Um, do you have time for me to discuss something? And please notice I said for me, because, you know, when I talk, I never stop. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that if you have something that's more personal, we should talk privately rather than use class time for that. So I see Robert has his hand up. So I'll go to Robert and then okay. you and I can talk another time when it's got more time for you. OK, go ahead, Robert. Um, so I've been doing this meditation for a little while and I've noticed um, previously you mentioned doing a visualization for some people sort of of love or um, I forgot what it was, but like sort of honey dripping down them. I've been trying to imagine sort of like a lotus wrapping them. Um, is that still appropriate to have some visualization of the people? I think you said don't have... Um, try not to have like a visualization of them doing something, but just being covered or, or wrapped in whatever it is. Yeah. Um, oh, sorry. I thought you were yeah. done, Robert. No, that, that, that was my first question. Then my um, second question is, let me the answer. Let me answer the. Coming. Let me answer yeah. the first one first. first one. So yep. the way that I did this when I was doing visualization is I was visualizing this molasses like going over my mom's yep. body because the Buddha teaches to envelop individuals with loving kindness and you would like to get to the point where the loving kindness is permeating in the mind and it's just filling up the mind. So if what you're doing is thinking about a lotus flower or whatever if you can envision enveloping this person in loving kindness and if that's what it is for you then great and that's how you would like to be able to invoke some visualization for some people that really works well for other people they don't need that so it's really up to each individual but if that's helpful for you you know feel free to use it awesome thank you and so my second question is sort of the same people keep coming up for armed me and who i've armed um, and I almost feel like it's an attachment to that when I'm saying those or um, those affirmations. Mm -hmm. What's your recommendation for losing that attachment to those specific people? Yeah, the way to eliminate attachment to specific people is to do that contemplation of death. I think you've heard me teach that before, where, oh, you, yep. where yep. you contemplate the person's death. You're going to need to do that a few times, you know, in order for the mind to fully let go. But that's one of the best ways to train your mind to let go of an attachment to an individual. So I would recommend that you use that. But usually that's something that you can only do maybe like once every two or three weeks, maybe even once a month, depending on how close you are to this person, because you'll notice that the mind will become discontent during this period of time. And usually your mind needs to kind of regain its stability for a little while. And then you'll be able to kind of bring that in again, maybe once every two weeks, once a month. And then also what I'll share with loving kindness meditation is depending on how strong your anger, hatred, and ill will is towards the individual, it can sometimes take a really long time for the mind to release that and gradually wear it away. So it could take sometimes months to be able to eliminate some anger, hatred, or will depending on who the individual is and how much anger is in the mind. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, it looks like Chrissy has a question. Go ahead, ma'am. Hello, can you hear me? Sure can. It's nice to see you. <laughs> um, I have a question on the loving kindness meditation. Mm -hmm. um, it's noticed that when doing loving kindness meditation, I'm revamping pra my practice. And so the mind just is, it starts doing, say we're doing for your parents. And then my mind just goes, Whoop. And it's on something else. Um, <laughs> and then I'm like, okay. And I come back and there's a tendency to want to start completely over with the, uh, may, may they be peaceful. Um, and I'm wondering what your advice is at that point, then would you just start over completely? Would you go back to breathing mindfulness meditation um, in the past? I don't remember what I did. I think that I just continued. Mm -hmm. 
can, so that seems challenging now. <laughs> yeah, you can do any of those things. So if I understand it correctly, like maybe you're saying, may mom be peaceful, may mom be safe, and then you kind of lose your place of where you're at and you feel like you would like to start over. Is that right? Correct. Yeah. Then the mind goes like, did I do the dishes today or did I sort that laundry? And then I'm like, oh, wait, oh, wait, I'm meditating. Yeah. Okay. That's right. May mom be peaceful. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. So when you see that, when you see your mind wandering like that, that's where you would like to cut it off and let it go. Even if you're in loving kindness meditation, cut that off the dishes part, cut that off and come back. And if you'd like to start over with peaceful with mom, or if you'd like to start where you left off, like may she be well, you can do it that way. Either way is fine. If I'm understanding you correctly, also you've kind of been away from meditation for a while and now you're trying to kind of like pick it back up and get going with it again. If that's the case, doing some breathing mindfulness meditation for a few weeks to kind of get that going again will be really helpful and then start bringing in some loving kindness meditation so you can get a bit more focus and get your breathing mindfulness built up because when someone first starts i usually recommend that they do four to six even eight weeks of breathing mindfulness meditation before they bring in loving kindness but since you've been practicing in the past you won't need that much to kind of reorient your practice you probably just need like a week or two of breathing mindfulness and then once you're doing that consistently then bring in some loving kindness okay all right that makes sense it, it feels there's a tendency to do just the breathing mindfulness mm -hmm. and when it comes to the loving kindness meditation um it takes me a lot longer because of the struggle with the mind the monkey mind and mm -hmm. um so i tend to however i didn't stop meditating it's just I don't meditate as much as I should be, and um, it isn't as beneficial because of that. <laughs> so yeah. when I do, it's just the breathing mindfulness because it takes so much time for me to do a loving kindness meditation because I have frequently restarting. I see. <laughs> yeah, you would definitely like to get consistent with your breathing mindfulness where like you can see a week or two that you're consistently meditating like two to three times and you're gradually building that up in terms of the time frame. And then when you start doing the loving kindness, if you would like to just start where you left off, like if you do may mom be peaceful, may mom be safe, your mind goes to the dishes, you can come back and just go with may she be well but do like maybe 30 seconds two minutes worth of breathing mindfulness there right in the middle to kind of like get your mind refocused and concentrated and then you can come back to the may she be well you know there's no need to start all the way over from the beginning you can start over from the beginning but you don't have to okay and then can i ask one more question about that sure yeah is it normal to experience a little bit of frustration towards yourself like oh why can't my mind just focus <laughs> that's your craving to be perfect today right you're wanting the mind to be concentrated so now you're getting frustrated because there's that craving to do it perfectly today where you got to just kind of let yourself off the hook and realize that hey you're a work in progress look at this silly mind this silly mind look at you <laughs> you know like he's just kind of like come on little girl get over here and like let's do some meditation you know so just laugh at yourself like how silly the mind really is and how much of a wild animal it really is and just uh, let yourself off the hook don't put pressure on yourself to be perfect today okay Thank you. I mm. really appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, it looks like Julia has some questions here in Zoom. Thank you, Teacher David. I'm having trouble maintaining habit of meditation. Do you have any tips? The ability to do meditation and being dedicated and diligent, you just got to pull up the boots and just do it. You know, there's no magic button to press there's nothing like that you've got to be able to see the benefits in it just like when we were children we didn't see the benefits of brushing our teeth and taking a shower and all these kinds of things and our parents had to you know kind of tell us over and over and over again to do that stuff but somewhere around 12 years old you know maybe 10 12 we started to do it regularly because 
we liked it. We liked the benefits of it. We liked smelling good. We liked the feeling of feeling fresh and our mouth feeling fresh. So we did it on our own because we saw the benefits in it. So you got to be able to have enough initiative and willingness to meditate that you get to a point where you see the benefits and you can't even fathom not meditating. It's just like you can't fathom going to work without taking a shower, that you pretty much take a shower 99.9% of the time probably before you go to work. And that's something that you just know is just very beneficial for you. And you need to be able to see the meditation in the same way because we're all taught to clean our body. You know, this is something that's kind of ingrained in us growing up. (coughs) But in the Western culture, you know, we're not taught to clean the mind up and we're not really addressing the full being. This is why in Western culture, we have a lot of struggles and difficulties because we're only addressing half of the being. We're washing the body, we're brushing the teeth, we're combing the hair, but we're not taking care of this other really important part of this being, which is the mind. So you need to really prioritize that and see it as being so beneficial that you can't even fathom not meditating in a given day and then see enough benefits in that that you continue to stay dedicated and diligent with it. And then Julia has some more here. The same goes for addictive habits like checking my phone before bed. How should I get rid of bad habits? Thank you. So with those kinds of things, sometimes you need to put some kind of safeguards in place. So let's just talk about the phone since that's a common one. What I used to do is I used to get my phone to the point where it was like multiple layers removed. So I would like put it into a bag that has a zipper and then I would put it into like another bag that has like a zipper and then I would put it into a suitcase that has like a couple of buckles on it. Then I would like put the suitcase and stash it somewhere. Right. And this is like a period of time where I'm not planning to touch the phone at all. And my mind was maybe really craving to touch it. I would put these multiple layers in place so that somewhere along the line, if I started digging into the suitcases and the bags, the wisdom can kick in and I could restrain the mind and I'd be like, no, 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 I'm not going to do that. Right. And the more layers that I put in place like that, the less likely that the mind was willing to like kind of dive into that and actually do that. So that was something that I did with the phone that can be helpful for you. Another thing you can do is you can actually leave your phone at home sometimes. I know that as a mother and as a business owner, that's probably really far outside your mind of ever thinking that you could ever do something like that, but you can, right? We used to go out when we were kids, maybe, I don't know how old you are, but I know when I was a kid, I didn't have a mobile phone. They hadn't even been invented yet, right? So I used to go outside without a mobile phone. So If you're going out shopping for two or three or four hours, like go outside without your phone. This is very liberating for yourself. And then when you come home, don't just run to the phone and look to see who messaged you and what did you miss. Just come home, put away your groceries or put away your items or go watch some TV, go spend some time with your children, go outside in the backyard and play or whatever it is that you can do. Do that for 30 minutes or an hour, even two hours, and then go see your phone right? Rather than just running to it right away. This is how you eliminate an attachment to a phone. And you're going to need to do that multiple times. It's not going to be just one time and your mind's going to be able to let it go. You're going to need to be able to do that multiple times. And for in terms of other things that you have that are in your mind that you might be trying to get rid of, each one of these you can share with me and I can give you tips Essentially, what you'd like to do is distance the mind from these things. That's how you're going to eliminate attachment. You got to distance your mind from it. Like the example I just gave you with the phone, you're distancing your mind from it so that you can train your mind to let it go. So you're going to need to be creative and figure out with some of these things, how do you distance your mind from it? And then that way it trains your mind over multiple sessions to let it go. And then Julie is asking more here. I feel also that love and hate are both the same in the sense of strong feelings of attachment, extreme like or dislike. Is it best to be indifferent or detached? Thank you. So based on what you're asking there, Julia, it looks like you're not yet understanding what unconditional love is. Oftentimes people think that what they're thinking is love it's actually craving desire attachment. That's not the love, the longing, the yearning, the wanting to hold on to this 
person, the feeling like, oh, I miss you so much and I can't be without you. Or if somebody gets injured or sick and you're worried about them, that's not the actual love that's causing that. That's the craving, desire, attachment. The love is this genuine interest in seeing all beings be well. It's unconditional love. So you might decide to go back and read volume one, chapter 15, and even watch one of the classes where I taught on that so that you can get more and more familiar with what true love is. And then as you have questions, you can either reach out in classes, you can post in the Facebook group, you can send me a private message or schedule personal guidance so that you can more and more understand what true love is because this is really important because love and dislike are opposites. They aren't the same. And and craving and love aren't the same things. So you can learn how to be unattached while still loving someone, right? That's the name of that chapter is true love, love without attachment. And sometimes when we say a detach, people think that you're indifferent and you go away from this person and you could care less what's happening with this person. That's actually not what non-attachment is because the unenlightened mind can typically only see two sides. It can see attachment where you're holding on really, really tight in your longing and yearning, or it can see the other side where you're indifferent and you could care less. And neither of those two sides are gonna experience peacefulness. So this middle way, it's really hard for the mind in the unenlightened state to see this middle way and practice it, where you can love without attachment. It's really hard for the mind to see that. So learning it intellectually and then understanding how to practice it and get help with it and then practicing it slowly but surely, this is one of the biggest challenges in life and in trying to get to enlightenment is learning love without attachment. The ego is really challenging to eliminate, but also learning in your relationships how to love without attachment. This can be really challenging for the mind. So I would suggest you do a bit more intellectual learning on that, do a little bit more learning in the online class, the recorded, either as a podcast or a video, and then spend some time asking me questions. And then you're going to need to practice with your family and your friends and the people around you. And then you're going to need some more questions. You're going to need some more help. You're going to really need to chip away at this one. And it's going to take more than just reading the chapter once and then implementing it. Something like the universal truth of impermanence, easy. You can understand that really straightforward. Discontentedness, you can pretty much understand that pretty straightforward. But something like love without attachment, it can take multiple years to learn how to practice this. Even my wife being here in the house with me and me helping her with my son, it probably took her a good five years of me actively working with her to be able to help her eliminate her attachment to her son and learn how to practice true love in that situation with her son. So it's going to take some time. You're going to need to do this iterative process where you intellectually learn, you reflect, you practice a little bit, you come back to your teacher to learn some more, you reflect a little bit, you practice some more, and you're going to need to do this multiple times before you truly figure out how to love without attachment. Okay, it looks like Chrissy has some more questions. Go ahead, ma'am. Thank you. Um, It is regarding love without attachment. So if you prefer I ask at a different time and not during this time, I understand. No, you're welcome to ask. We can ask any and all questions. It's just that Yusuf, he knows that he usually talks quite a bit and he'll ask... (laughs) you know, six, eight, 10, 12 questions. So he was being respectful there to not take up class time. Okay, I understand. Um, So in an effort to practice love without attachment, my life partner and I, we live really far apart, um, as you know, and we have been practicing a bit differently, trying um, to have like less control over one another and um this is hard to share like this but i feel like it might help other people anyways there's an he has an interest to continue to give me and my children money um and when he was coming regularly to stay at our house it was something that was helpful because he was residing there and eating and showering and whatnot where now we're not seeing a lot of each other um and it feels 
ungrate or like I'm wanting to control the situation again and be like telling him no, telling him what to do. And um, because I know that he's struggling financially too to get his situation there situated as much as we are. Um, And so I'm still trying to control that situation um, (laughs) and not just letting him do what he needs to do and what he feels is right. Um, But we've had conversations about it and it's just been, um, well, this is what I want to do and I'm trying to discourage it. Um, so is that because of the attachment to him wanting to be okay, me wanting him to be okay and like get his life situated or is it attachment to me wanting to be independent? Like, what are your thoughts on this? (laughs) Yeah, you're definitely trying to control the situation and that's craving desire attachment where what you need to be able to where what you need to be able to do is realize that he's practicing generosity that when he's offering to give you money or take care of the children that's his generosity and you can't control that what the buddha teaches you to do is to accept people's generosity to accept what is given and this is helping to enhance his mind that he's training his mind by practicing generosity to eliminate craving desire attachment and now when he's practicing generosity with you okay you receive that generosity now if you would like you can practice generosity back to him right you can like do things for him Mm -hmm. and that's your generosity to then practice with him so what the buddha teaches you to do is to accept people's generosity and because that's enhancing the quality of their mind and helping them to eliminate craving desire attachment and get closer and closer to enlightenment okay all right thank you Mm -hmm. i understand yeah you're welcome Okay, let me see if we have any other questions. Oh, we have Janae here in Facebook. Can I do loving kindness towards places or things? Normally, loving kindness meditation is for living beings, or it could be formless beings too, if you have any of those beings that you have anger, hatred, and no will towards. So usually, the loving kindness meditation is towards actual beings rather than places or things. But if you have anger and hatred for places and things, you know, maybe we can talk about that and see what that's all about. But this is typically for actual beings, because as long as you're causing harm to actual beings, or as long as you have anger, hatred, and a will towards actual beings, then this is going to result in difficulties and challenges within your own life, where you would like to clear that up, where you're not having anger and hatred towards others, because it'll come through in your intentions, speech, and actions. Where is if you were hateful towards a place or a thing, it's not going to ultimately produce any certain karma, but you would like to eliminate all anger, hatred, and ill will by eliminating a craving that might be producing that if there's any kind of anger or hatred towards a place or a thing, that that's what's going to clear that up. So if you'd like to give me more details on the, if you have these kinds of things in your mind, or if this would just maybe like a hypothetical question that you were asking, but typically it's towards actual living beings or even formless beings as well. So you can let me know if there's actual situation where you have places or things you feel like you hate that you need to include in a meditation. Okay, we've got some more hands up here. I'm not sure, Chrissy, if you still have your hand up from before or you have some more questions. I just forgot to put it down. I'm sorry. Oh, no worries. No worries. All right, Yusuf, you have a question? Um, I didn't understand what you said earlier, so I'll ask again. Uh, Is it okay to ask maybe a couple of questions? Not a discussion, but the questions that could push me along those days ahead. Sure. If you don't have the time, or if you don't have the time, it's completely okay. I have the time. It's just earlier you said that you were planning to ask questions and never stopping. So that's when I <laughs> that's when I mentioned that maybe we'll take another question. But if yeah. you have if you have a couple questions, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Uh, my first one is about uh, having conversations with people. I like have the biggest cravings to do so. I can never be silent when I am 
with anyone like even if there is nothing to talk about even if they are even if i am tired i keep squeezing myself squeeze my mind you can imagine yourself squeezing your body and then imagine yourself squeezing your mind at your hardest power just to talk and that is a frustrating to me for example like uh, yesterday i told my friends bye i am tired let's talk later and then another one came and sat with me even though i was tired and didn't want to talk i kept squeeze my mind just to have a conversation with him it's most likely related to the personal existence of you but i can't i can't find the root of it to get rid of it would you help me please sure this is frivolous speech or idle chatter where you're just talking a lot and you haven't learned how to restrain your mind this is where you need to be able to practice breathing mindfulness meditation consistently and the generosity to proactively train your mind but then in the moment you're going to need to be able to notice that your mind is longing and yearning and wanting to speak and you're going to need to pull it back like reins of a horse you're going to need to restrain your mind so you're going to need to do that in the situation until you're able to have a well-disciplined mind that you can choose to talk in some situations and you can choose not to talk in other situations I'm not really sure if it is uh, a craving for a frivolous speech, but instead it is a craving for uh, me to be in a certain way, in an attractive way with people, the one who talks, the one who knows how to open a co- topic and uh, start a conversation. Uh, so do you think it is related to the person who was to you more than frivolous <clears throat> speech? I didn't say it was a craving for frivolous speech. I said that it is frivolous speech. It is idle chatter. So there's an underlying craving that whenever the mind is having idle chatter or frivolous speech, there's an underlying craving desire attachment. So what type of craving desire attachment and where is the craving desire attachment? It sounds like you just have a craving to speak. You know, I've seen that, you know, with you in, in certain situations or just a craving to talk. So that doesn't have to be related to personal existence view. It's related to central desire, the mind's longing, yearning. Whenever there's craving, desire, attachment involved, it's typically coming from central desire. And that's where you would like to be practicing breathing, mindfulness, meditation, and generosity to train your mind to knock that down. But then you need to be practicing mindfulness in the moment from the Eightfold Path and then apply right effort to cut it off and let it go, restraining the mind in those situations where your mind's wanting to talk and longing, yearning. Train your mind to just be able to not talk. Okay, so let's imagine that I'm in a relationship with a girl. Um, if we aren't talking, if we like just being silent for a couple of minutes, like couple, maybe for half an hour, like how to enjoy our relationships, uh, ourselves together, if there is no conversation between us? Um, you might <clears throat> see this as maybe a silly question, but it is like uh, I am asking you, how can I eat this apple? You might see it. You might see it as a silly question, but I don't really know. I haven't any. I don't have any wisdom regarding this. I haven't been in a relationship in my life. I don't have any wisdom regarding even relationships with boys. So, um, if one doesn't talk with another, how can they enjoy their time then? Yeah. So when I'm sharing with you to restrain your mind and in some situations not to talk. That's not to say that's the way you should function all the time. You just need to be able to do that in certain situations in order to get control and discipline of your mind. If you're sitting with your girlfriend or a woman that you would like to be your girlfriend, have a conversation. But you need to be able to learn how to restrain your mind. Not that you're never talking ever. So when I give you guidance, it's like, okay, you have this craving to talk. Now you need to learn how to restrain your mind and you need to learn how to bring it back and pull it back. But that's not to say that you would never talk. Then after you learn how to restrain your mind and you're doing that really well, then in certain situations, you're going to need to learn how to talk a little bit and then let other people talk and then talk a little bit and let other people talk. You're going to need to learn how to do this. But the first part of this is to learn how to restrain your mind. Um, yeah, I do understand what you said. I didn't misunderstood it, but uh, uh, maybe I am asking a lot of questions related to this because I see it like killing me to be silent in a 
in a relationship or in a conversation because uh, I guess it really relates to the personal existence of you. I want to be perceived in a certain way. So yeah, I will try to restrain my mind. Um, I have another question about the self-image uh, for the so, couple. Can I can the, I reply something first, Yusuf, before you go on? Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. So the only reason why you feel like that is killing you is because you have such a longing, yearning, and such a craving to talk that the idea of not talking feels really painful for you. It feels like, you know, like you said, like it's killing you or you're going to die. So you need to <laughs> be able to see that that's actually beneficial. What you're eliminating is you're eliminating the craving. So you, this is going to be very helpful and very beneficial for you. So the fact that you do feel like it's killing you to not speak, that's all the more reason why it's so important for you to be able to learn how to do this and train your mind to do it. I would appreciate you to give me tips on doing that because even though I have tried to decrease the amount of me speaking, uh, I failed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't have enough discipline of your mind. That's why you need to be practicing <laughs> breathing mindfulness meditation and generosity. And you're going to need to slowly, slowly, slowly build up your discipline of your mind to be able to restrain it. And I wouldn't think about it as you're failing because you'll continue to so-called fail until you're doing it successful. You're going to need to build up your wisdom. You're going to need to build up your strength of the mind. It's just like a muscle. When you take it to the gym, you lift the weights and it's getting stronger and stronger. So when you go do your meditation and you're practicing generosity, you're training your mind to let go, let go, let go, let go. But you're going to have multiple situations where you're trying to restrain the mind and you're just not able to do it. And that shows you how undisciplined your mind really is and how much training you need. Okay. Um, about the second question, uh, <clears throat> for the last couple of days, I have been trying <clears throat> to, to let go about my craving to be in a certain way and just be the way I am. And I have been able to succeed in that a little bit. And those days was were the best days of my life. But there comes a voice always in my mind says that I need to change. I need to change. I need to maybe be calm. I need maybe to talk less, to do those things. Uh, and I don't know if it is really beneficial to listen to that voice, to maybe be, be more calm, be in a different way, or it's just my craving to be in a certain way. Yeah, based on what I know about your life and the friends that you're around and how you guys interact and things that you've shared with me in the past, there's a lot of expectations that you guys put on each other where your friends are trying to tell you what you should and shouldn't be doing and you're telling your friends what they should and shouldn't be doing. And as long as your mind's doing that with other people, you're going to do it to yourself too. Because what you're talking about is you're putting a lot of expectations on yourself of how you should or shouldn't be. And your mind is like stuck in this constant cycle of just putting expectations on other people, putting expectations on yourself. Other people are putting expectations on you. And you need to break free of all of this and just get to a, a point of stability. So don't put all these expectations on yourself of how you should or shouldn't be. Just go out and enjoy life, but at the same time, be practicing the Eightfold Path. Um, yeah, okay. So, yeah. <laughs> Uh, the last question is about <clears throat> me noticing the amount of crave. Uh, sorry, the amount of questions I have, the amount of cravings and the questions also. Um, I asked you on Messenger like ten questions on Facebook, five questions, and I have in my notebook like a hundred, and I have in my mind like a thousand question. I noticed that yeah, I can ask them and I can work on them and I can eliminate them and they will enhance my life. But at the same time, they are exhausting me, making me like so exhausted that I can't face them anymore. I just want to lie down and rest. <clears throat> so you keep or you kept telling me for months and months to like focus on the Eightfold Bath, let go of those, let go of those. But I didn't really understand what you mean. So you said to focus on the Eightfold Bath and you said to work on the personal existence, uh, sorry, on the ego. So should I 
work on the cravings I have on the uh, and ask the questions about them because I still don't have the full wisdom to work on them on my own. Or I should just keep letting them go over and over, like maybe for a year, maybe two years, till I have the restrained mind and then work on my cravings. I don't know what uh, to do. And I don't understand what you are telling me by focusing on the hateful bath. Sure. So the thing that's exhausting you isn't the questions <clears throat> themselves. It's the underlying craving desire attachment that you have for asking questions and getting answers to them. Carrying around craving desire attachment, it's like a burden and it'll exhaust you. That's why you're exhausted because you're carrying around so much craving and you put expectations on people like you see in Messenger. You're just asking me question after question after question after question after question. <laughs> and if I don't reply to you in a certain time frame, you keep putting expectations on me. And that's why I stopped replying to you. I just don't reply to you in Messenger anymore because you're full of all these expectations and wanting me to be a certain way. And this can be very exhausting for you to carry around all these things. And what I've been sharing with you over the last several months is you need to focus on the Eightfold Path because you don't understand it right now. Because if you understood it, some of these questions that you're asking me, you wouldn't be asking me these questions. Like what to do when you really want to be talking a lot. If you understood the Eightfold Path, you would understand the mental discipline section of right mindfulness and right effort that you need to restrain your mind. You would understand if you understood the Eightfold Path that in situations where you're wanting to ask question after question after question and you're wanting to put your expectations on your friends and even your teacher, you would know that you need to restrain your mind from that. But you don't understand that because you haven't actually studied the Eightfold Path in detail. So I have continued to point you to the Eightfold Path because as long as you don't understand that, you're going to just keep staying stuck in these same problems over and over and over again. So it doesn't matter all the questions you're asking me and I'm explaining to you what to do to restrain your mind and so forth. It doesn't work because you're not actually practicing the whole full path. You need to be able to deeply understand that and practice it because no matter what questions you ask me, it's not going to help you when I give you the answer because you haven't understood the Eightfold Path and you're not practicing that. Well, if you would notice for the last maybe month, my questions were like, I give you the situation and I give you the answer for it from my mind. Uh, because what I was looking for is confidence, even though maybe my mind knows the answer, but is, it is not fully confident if it is the wisest answer or if it is wise. For example, when I told you that I just went to a girl and asked her to sit next to her and did sit next to her, I felt in my mind some discomfort that she might not really want it to but then I gave you the answer that it is just my perception it is her decision I here wanted to gain some confidence because even though I might be knowing the answer but I couldn't work on it on my own because my mind is maybe uh, terrified or worried about about working on that answer on itself the questions that you keep asking me are all answered for you in the eightfold path that's why for many months I've been guiding you to learn the Eightfold Path because every single question that you're asking me all comes back to the Eightfold Path. And I'm not going to be able to sit down and hold your hand and show you every little <laughs> thing about the Eightfold Path. That's why I have the books and the audio books and the videos and the podcast. You can take your time. You're an adult. You can learn the Eightfold Path. But me just answering your questions isn't going to be helpful because I've already done that with you. The first several months that you were learning with me, I would just answer your questions. But then when I've realized that, man, this student doesn't even know the Eightfold Path and all of his questions are answered in the Eightfold Path. So that's why I've been just directing you to the Eightfold Path. And I've been asking you to study that. But because you're not studying it and you're not learning it, you're not getting the help that you need. And that's why I've just stopped answering your questions because it doesn't make sense for me to keep answering your questions when the answers are right there for you in the Eightfold Path. And you're not taking the time to actually study the Eightfold Path. So why would I take the time to teach you something about some question that you have 
when you haven't even taken the time to study the most core and basic and fundamental teaching. Mm, it is hard to understand what you are saying. So, yeah, I will take the time to understand it. So thank you for giving me your time today. Thank you very much. <laughs> All I'm saying, Yusuf, is study the Eightfold Path. If you can't understand that, I'm not sure how else to help you. I've been sharing the same thing for many months. Study the Eightfold Path. The words of the Buddha, my words, chapter 4 and chapter 5 and then watch the videos online. Remember it in detail so that you can know exactly what the Eightfold Path is, each individual factor. Well, what if my mind gets terrified about a situation and I need some confidence? Then I came to ask you and you didn't answer because you said go that's, on the Eightfold Path. That's you being attached to me. You're wanting confidence from me and I'm not going to let you get attached to me. Uh, okay. <laughs> Okay, okay, thank you. Okay. <laughs> All right. So let me see if we have any questions anywhere else. All right, I don't see any questions anywhere else. So what I'm going to do is just say thank all of you guys for joining for today's class. Thank you for your questions. Thank you for the discussion. In the future, I'm going to be teaching this Sunday, which is our last Sunday before the restart of our group learning program. And then I'm still going to be teaching on Wednesday, where I'm going to be doing a guided breathing mindfulness meditation session and opening up to any and all questions that you guys have. So you're more than welcome to attend this Sunday, which the title of the class is the five hindrances. This is the five things that are going to hinder you from being able to experience enlightenment. So now that I've taught for seven months all the things that you need to do in order to be able to get to enlightenment, I'm now going to teach you the five things that are going to hinder you from being able to actually get to enlightenment. And I'm going to teach you the solutions of how to remedy those and overcome those so that those are no longer obstacles in your day to day life. And then, like I mentioned on Wednesday, we'll be doing breathing mindfulness meditation together. So thank you all for joining. And perhaps I'll see you guys in one of these future classes. Be well and have a very lovely and wonderful rest of your day. Take care. Sawadee Thank you for listening to this podcast. To provide support for this podcast, visit patreon.com forward slash support Buddha. To access more teachings, visit buddhadailywisdom.com. There, you will discover a full range of courses, retreats, and online resources to assist you on the path to enlightenment. Remember to establish a daily, consistent meditation practice, along with learning and practicing these teachings. A well-developed meditation practice is the foundation in which to train the mind to attain enlightenment.